Good morning, I'm Jordi Bailina, I'm the technical lead at Polygon Hermes. So I'm going to explain a small piece of the, of the ZKVM, that's how we are verifying a, a, a Stark with a Snark. As I explained it before in the panel, uh, the last piece of the, of, the, of the prover is mainly converting, we have a Stark and then we want to prove that on chain and what we do is we create a circuit that verifies this Stark and uh, then we, we, we prove it in, 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 in the Snark. Okay. Um, well, this is uh, well. This is the ZKVM that we are building. Mainly, we are using PIL, this polynomial identity language, to build all the full system. And at the end, what we have is a set of polynomials with a set of identities that needs to fulfill. With this, can generate automatically. The idea of this is that once you have this PIL, you can generate automatically a Stark. And not only that, that uh, with this with this Stark. Uh, you can also automatically generate a Stark that verifies that, uh, that, that, that other Stark. Okay? So we have our recursion Starks, and you can, we can do that many times, and we can even aggregate. Uh, we can even aggregate, and then we can build a system that looks something like that. We can have many proofs of many blocks, and then we can pack them together in a kind of a tree, and then at the end, in the last step, before, before sending to the Ethereum, we just uh, convert this Stark to the Snark. And this is this is done quite automatically, so you need to care just about building the pill, and the rest is quite uh, uh, straightforward. Okay, so let's see how how we do that. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to build a circuit. Actually, what we want to build is a circum circuit that, as an input, you have a star proof. Okay, so this is the star proof. So in the circuit, you have to validate this star proof. So we need to dip in what's inside the star proof. What what's what star proof? What means this of a star proof? Well, the first thing that well, things that you have. The first thing that you have is uh, you have the transcript. Transcript are mainly hashes. Okay, so you need to have these random numbers that goes back and forth. This is something that we need to compute inside the inside the circuit. These are mainly hashes. Okay, as a transcript, in this case, we are using uh, well a, a hash function. In this case, we are using uh, for the Stark. We are going to start with a hash function that's a, a friendly hash function. In this case, a Poseidon with a BN corp. We are just using this hash function to compute the to compute the the, the, the randomness the, of the of the transcript. Okay. Another piece is well, is you have a polynomial evaluations, and then you need to check uh, you need to check that these polynomial evaluations are uh, are okay, that they are fitting. That means that you need to do a lot of arithmetic, and in the case of us, we are using the Goldilocks prime, prime field, and but here we are in the BN, so we need to work with this cross prime field. We need to do this cross prime field operations. So we need to do cross prime field inside the inside the the, the inside the inside the circuit. Um, the next thing that we have to do is we need to do openings. Okay, so the Stark mainly is uh, Merkle trees, and we need to just validate these Merkle trees. Here the trick is again, use the Poseidon hash function. So if you use a Poseidon, so a, a snark friendly hash function, then doing that, that inside, the, inside the circuit is relatively cheap. So we do that uh, for, the, for the openings itself. Okay, once you have the openings, you need to evaluate this opening polynomial, which is a derivative polynomial, you need to evaluate those openings at that point. Okay, so you need here more uh, arithmetic operations, okay? And finally, we have the fry, okay? Fry is openings again, so <laughs> lots of openings, that's one thing, so every time that you go to us uh, back in the step, you do, an, uh, you do openings, so this is again Poseidon uh, here, and then you have to do polynomial evaluations, but these are in the cross prime, we are, this is in the Goldilocks uh, prime field, okay? The best way to do a uh, uh, polynomial evaluation is mainly doing an, an FFT kind of uh, kind of an FFT. Okay, so and finally in the last star we also need to do uh, uh, an, an, an FFT for the for the final polynomial that we need to check that the final polynomial of, of certain degree. Mainly you do an FFT and check that the half of the or that part of the bits are zero. Okay, so this is a structure of the of the of the star. So here, the, 
I'm going to jump this. So here the the well the the, the 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 trick here is how much so how we do this cross prime field operation. This is probably the most uh, simple thing. And the idea is where where we are ju just doing in a naive so in a very naive way. Okay. So we just uh, if we are doing an operation like that, like a multiplication, uh, in this case is, uh, well, we just do a couple of uh, rain checks, okay? That means that uh, more or less uh, prime uh, cross, so a multiplication with uh, B, uh, a gold deluxe multiplication, it costs 146 constraints, okay? Uh, the fry, and this is a, a one, th one thing that's a specific on the fry, uh, the gold deluxe is a very small prime field. So uh, once you work with a random number, you cannot work with the base field because it's, it's very small. So you need to work with extension fields. So you work with extension. In, this, in our case, we're working with an extension three of the Goldilocks. Okay. So that means that doing a multiplication in the extension field three, this is uh, something that's 438 uh, uh, constraints, which is a lot, you know, compared to one, uh, but. Uh, it's not that much, okay? So here the thing is, okay, let's, let's do some numbers of some examples of some Starks, uh, how it would look like, okay? Well, this is the, 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 for the hash functions, we are using a 16 inputs, so we can do a, a trees that goes at, at four at four, and then a, a constraint is just 612 constraints, just doing a single hash, which is quite optimal uh, if we do it in that way, okay? So let's put some example. This is, these numbers are not exactly, but are similar to the ones that we are using for the CKVM circuit. In this case, we are talking about, let's talk about uh, 1,000 polynomials, okay? Uh, we have a, let's do a blow up factor of two. That means that we need to do a lot of queries in the, in the, the, in the SNARK. In this case, it's 128 queries. Uh, this is, we have that, it's important this blow-up factor of two, because if you go, for example, a blow-up factor of four, that means that we are doubling the proving, the proving time. Okay, so uh, we need to go to the minimal, especially when we have so many polynomials here, so that's why we use a blow-up factor of two. Okay, so let's talk with the uh, sides of a polynomial of two to the 24 after the blow-up factor, so it's two to the 23 to two to the 24, okay? And of course, we have constraints. Let's assume that the number of constraints is more or less the same number of polynomials. This is just a, just a subjection. And then we have, in each constraint, we have like two multiplications for each constraint, okay? These numbers, of course, depend on the circuit and depend what you're doing and so on. But this is just, would say, a, it would be a good example of a ZKBM circuit-like, okay? So it's a big circuit, uh, yeah. okay? So for this is, okay, here, let's see how much it would it cost. This uh, in in, cons in number of constraints. Here, of course, the transcript is not that much. The checking the polynomial constraints uh, uh, at the random point, well, it's start to be an no important number, but not that much. Uh, the number of queries, we have so many polynomials, so we need, there are so many polynomials, so mainly what we do is a linear hash of the evaluations and then do the Merkleites. But this is, this is just for the, the queries, the first queries, not in the fry yet, but for the first queries of all the polynomials. This is our that. And here is the big, probably the biggest part, okay? The biggest part is when we need to compute this uh, uh, opening polynomial. Uh, there are so many polynomials, and we need to do so many multiplications out of the field that this is a number that grows uh, a lot, okay? And here is the, the big part of the proof is this uh, 112 millions. What else we have? We have the, well, this is the queries of the fry. Here are the, F, the FFTs, the, the, uh, the polynomial evaluations, the entities if to going deep in the fry, and the, final, and, the final, and the final polynomial evaluation. So this gives us something that's huge. It's 127 million constraints, but it's, it's doable. This is a circuit that, for example, the Hermes 1 circuit had this number of constraints, uh, more or less. So, and you can, do that in about 100 seconds in a big CPU, okay? So in rapid snark. So that's something that's doable, but you know, it's gonna be a big circuit, okay? The thing is that um, with uh, uh, what we can do, the technique that we are using is that instead of having a snark, so we have, a, the, we have this big circuit. So instead of this proving directly with a snark, 
what you can do is you can do different level of different levels of recursion. So you can build a Stark that verifies another Stark. So you get a proof that's much smaller. Maybe you, you can do repeat that again. You do another Stark that verifies the Stark. So you get even a smaller proof. And at the end, you can have uh, uh, a final proof that can be much, 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 much smaller. OK? And this is, this is actually more or less what we are doing. Here, is, here I put you the real numbers of the current structure. This is a structure of the prover that we are running right now in the public testnet. OK? So this is uh, three steps. OK? The first step is uh, this number of polynomials, but you need to count that. This is about 1,000 polynomials, but then we have 43 block ups, one permutation check where we have different, different properties. So this is a, a big circuit. We are working with 2 to the 23, blow up factor of 2. Here you see the structure, the, the way that the structure we are of the fry. So we are building the fry. OK? So this goes to another polynomial. So it goes to another proof. The second proof is a proof that's much smaller. It's just uh, 20 polynomials with, uh, uh, sorry, uh, 12 polynomials. 20 of them are constant. Uh, 10 intermediary polynomials, no block ups, just one connection check, and uh, yeah, and 23, 23 identities. And then we do go to the third one. This is also, you see here is the GL. GL means Goldilocks. This is a, 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 a Stark that's built with Goldilocks. But the last one is built with VN. 128, OK? And the last one is just a smaller. It's just 20. It has only 12 polynomials. But the, and the size of the polynomial is two to the, this is just 20, 24. Uh, uh, so 2 to 24. Well, it's 2 to 22 and the blow up factor of 4 in this case. We could do it smaller, OK? But at the end, here is a, a compromise. Sometimes you, you get it smaller, but then the proving time of this uh, smaller is bigger. So at the end, it's better maybe to have a bigger last circuit that it's a bigger last circuit th uh, than uh, that just squeezing to the end to the smaller and keeping, uh, 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 and keeping bigger. So these are balances and checking what's the best structure uh, 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 on that. Okay. So if we go to more uh, something that we can go far, so that we can squeeze more. Uh, the last circuit, you can do, well, five can, uh, this, well, let me just, with something that's 60 polynomials with a blow up factor of uh, 16, uh, so two to the four, and uh, mm, mm, this, you, you, with this, you just require 16 queries, which is to having the same 120, 128 bits. Uh, um, security. Uh, you can go a polynomial after a blow off factor of, of 2 to the 24. So it will be a polynomial of 2 to the 20 that goes to 2 to the 24. And yeah, this is our number of constraints. And if we do the numbers with this, see that the numbers are getting much, much, much smaller. At the end, we can, if we add them all together, we can have something that's below 2 million constraints. And this is something that can be built in less than two seconds. It's really, uh, it's quite insignificant. Uh, compared to the to the proving to the proving to the proving time, so uh, this is very much the, the the conclusion. I just put this slide from the ZKBM, but this is uh, the full just to, to 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 explain you what are the current times of the of the full ZKBM prover. Okay, so currently in an uh, in a big machine, you know, this is a 192 cores. Uh, machine. Uh, it's a $10 per hour uh, machine, uh, more or less, in AWS. Okay. Uh, the, this proof, it takes nine minutes. Okay. Uh, we, can, well, we can process four million gas in this proof. So this would be equivalent, more or less, a cost per transaction would be less than a cent. So 0 0.7 cents per dollar. But you see that this is actually, uh, it's a proof that's actually running. Uh, public testnet is running, so, and you can see the code and see how the prover works, and when you can build your proofs uh, in there, okay? This is just a CPU prover, and here there is lots of margins to, to, to improve. Here from GPU, uh, we expect maybe one order of magnitude faster, and FPGAs, the uh, new CPUs are doing, are, are performing much better. Yeah, there are a lot of things that, that are happening. But this is just a, uh, uh, have you on some numbers, some idea of where the proving times uh, are and, 
the recursion. Another thing that's not here, but uh, somebody already put it in before, and is that uh, verifying a GROW16 in EVM, this is uh, 200K, uh, around 200K gas, which is probably the cheapest way, the cheapest thing that you can, that you can do. Plonk is 300K, which is not that much. You save the processor up, so probably it's gonna be the, the options that we will put it in mainnet. And yeah, that's mainly my presentation. I don't know if there are questions. Thank you.